This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 5. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Kakwadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS, whom rule well, teach well, being great examples to his younger brothers. And peace and blessing, salutations to the whole flake out there pushing his word and truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah pushing to get up out of here. Shalom on to the whole flake, the believers, the listeners whom have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. And what I want to get into, okay, this this morning, all right, is dealing with the glory of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah soon to be revealed okay and understanding that glory is that we're about to see you know the power from another realm enter into this realm okay the glory of the spiritual realm is finna enter into the earthly realm all right through your how shot all right and you get that word glory okay let's read it again in isaiah 14 5 and we'll get that word glory it's the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 5 And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed And all flesh shall see it together For the mouth of the Lord Have spoken it Okay And when you go into his word glory You see Alright in the Hebrew Alright It's um uh, Kabad Okay uh, Kabad Kabanad, okay, and it says glory, abundance, okay, a reverence, a splendor, okay. We're finna see the splendor of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, and it's gonna be showcased through Yahweh Shah and the power that he's coming to this realm with, okay. Let's get that word splendor, okay. It says magnificent. And splendid appearance, grandeur. Okay, we're finna see a magnificent, splendid appearance, a grandeur appearance. Okay, of Yahweh Shah. You know, because his first appearance, he came what lowly. Okay, as the scriptures say, he came lowly. All right, let's get that. His um. Is that Zechariah the ninth chapter? Okay. <laughs> Zechariah nine, let me see. Lowly. Yeah, Zechariah nine and nine, yeah, right there. Alright, this book of Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh, Yahweh Shai, his first appearance. He is just in having salvation, okay, through his sacrifice, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat or a foal of an ass. So he came lowly, okay? He didn't come in the glory, he came lowly, okay? But this time he's getting ready to come in his glory. Let's get that word lowly, okay? Hebrew is uh, Anaya, okay, Anaya, which means poor, afflicted, humble, okay, <laughs> wretched. You see that? Humble, needy. What did he say? Tell one man, he said, The son of man, he said, Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head, okay? He had Jake the one to follow him, <laughs> okay? He was needy. Okay, pretty much, hey, he was being taken care of through the ministry. Okay, he came in that lowly estate. All right, but this time he's coming in splendor. Okay, and glory. All right, let's prove it. Okay, so we go from there and let's get. Matthew 
24. I'm writing 21. Matter of fact, let's jump to the point. And 29. Okay, Matthew 24, 29. It says immediately after the tribulation, showing you that Yahweh Shah is coming in the midst of tribulation. And we're in those times because we see tribulation brewing in the earth. The stage is set for a lot of tribulation to happen. Okay? And that's going to usher in this glorious appearing of Yahweh Shah. Okay? <laughs> Even the title of the of the um, of the precepts says what? The glorious return. Okay? It says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Okay? So this is the time Yahweh Shai is going to come in the peak of chaos. Okay, in a very dark time in the earth. You see? And it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven in the chariots. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, all the people. Okay? Because why? He's come to wage war and righteousness against this wicked society, man. Okay? He's not coming back, all right, to set up this utopia, this Christian utopia, everyone getting along. You know, holding their hands and, and, and smiling and singing, okay, Christian tunes, man. Okay, he's coming back to wage war against this wicked society, man, from the top to bottom. Okay, it says, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay, with power and great glory. You see that? He's coming back glorious. Okay, because when you go here in Isaiah, and remember he came lowly. Okay, but this time he's coming back with power and great glory. You see, you go to Isaiah 47 and 1 it says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. See, Yahweh Shai, as he come in his glory, he's going to demote Esau in the earth to a slave. Okay. Esau is about to be demoted. America is not about to be this superpower on the earth anymore when Yahweh Shai comes. It says, sit on the ground. There is no throne. Okay, why? Because Yahweh Shai will be in power. When Yahweh Shai comes into this, into this realm, he will be immediately the new ruler. Okay? Ain't no throne for these heathens. Okay? Ain't no, ain't no uh, 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 authority. For America, all right, within the rulership of Yahweh, you see, it says, "O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal, uncover the locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers." And this is what's happening. Okay, this man is becoming bare. Okay, what he's about, his true agendas in the earth. Okay, he can't hide. Under the banner of being Christian and this humanitarian and he's all for the people and, you know, this moral excellence and, you know, this great, you know, uh, uh, guru in the earth. No, all this being made bare, man. He's the wicked that the Bible speaks of. These are Edomites that run the earth, man. Okay? Not Europeans and so-called white people and anglo saxons No, these are Edomites, the descendants of Esau whom the scripture says the Lord hates. Okay, and it says, "Thy nakedness shall be uncovered." So it shows you what that the that there's gonna be a great exposure, which ha is happening now to the point where they are fighting, okay, to censor, you know, the exposure that's coming out, okay, and then it will lead to tribulation, and then Yahweh Shah will come in His glory, okay, and it says. Take the millstones and grind meal, uncover the locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Okay, he's coming in that glory of being a God. There's a glory to being a God, you know. Immortal. 
can't die. Okay, full control over the elements and authority over everything. You see, that's the glory that Yahweh Shai is coming with, man. And it's going to be in abundance. It's going to overwhelm these devils, man. That's why you get Isaiah 63, Isaiah 63 and 1. It says, who is that that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This is Yahweh Shai. This that is glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Now, let's get this. Okay. Let's get a few words. Okay, you can go for the glorious, and the word is what? Hadar. Okay, Hadar. Okay. Adorn. Okay, honor. <laughs> you see? To glorify, to be high. Okay? Hadar. That would be a good Hebrew name. Like Bun Hadar. My glorious son. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, like Bun Hadar. So feminine would be... Um, not Hadar or Hadar, but not you know, glorious daughter. Um, but let's go from there. I want to get this mighty, okay, which is a uh, rock, okay, in the Hebrew, which means what much, many, great, abundant, enough, greater than, much exceedingly, okay. The chariot is going to be, the, the, the sky is going to be filled with chariots. And Yahweh Shah's chariot, all right, could be bigger than the earth. You know, plus all the other chariots is going to be with him. You see? Mighty to save. More than enough power to deliver his people and conquer the earth in righteousness, man. And it's going to be a glory. Okay? And we can end it here. The book of Luke. Okay? The book of Luke chapter 9. All right, verse 24. He said, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. And see, that's the sacrifice. You know, losing our life. You know, even like, you know, our lifestyle kind of diminishes because we're so, you know, in tune with the affairs of Yahweh Bashem Shai. You know, that we, you know, relationships are severed. Okay, you know, money opportunities and you know different things that we miss out on, okay, because we're gaining our life in Yahweh Shah. We're losing our life in this world, but we're gaining Yahweh Shah. Okay, and it's gonna come a time where we're gonna have to make that ultimate decision not to take the Karakma, and that's gonna be the ultimate example of losing our life because we're gonna be outcasts. Okay, and it says, For what a man, for what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself and be cast away? Okay, there's no advantage this society has over the promises of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. Okay, nothing that's, that, that is offered in this society, even if you were to take the place of the elites. Okay. <laughs> To be included in the Rothschild banking family, that still, okay, will surpass the glory that we're about to see at the coming of Yahweh Shah and the upgrade we're about to get when Yahweh Shah returns. There's no advantage, okay, in anything on this side versus what's to come. All right, and this is the point for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, which you have a lot of Israelites, they're ashamed of the doctrine. And that's why they try to make it world friendly. Okay, because they're ashamed. Okay, in particular things in the doctrine. They're ashamed. Uh, uh, the, the Bible speaks about enslaving the nations. Okay, men having multiple women. Okay, uh, uh, the order of man and woman. Okay, going back to different things in the doctrine, they're offended. Okay, the sacrifice that has to be made, you know, um, um, 
you know, us becoming Hebrews and really tapping into our priestly, you know, duties. Okay. A lot of people are ashamed of that, man. And that's why they try to make their doctrine worldly friendly because they're ashamed of, 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 of their own uh, 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 inheritance and culture, man. Okay, which ultimately they're ashamed of Yahweh Shai. Yeah, he is the culture. <laughs> and that's another lesson. It said, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. So Yahweh Shai is going to come in the glory of his father, his own glory and of the holy angels. Okay, it's going to be a splendid, magnificent, okay, appearance that Yahweh Shai is going to come back with. Okay, splendid. <laughs> All right. And it's going to be a, it's going to be the spiritual realm coming to this realm. Okay, a true showcase of power. So, Lord, will you brothers and you few sisters edify once again and give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashem, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of the who rule well, teach well, being a great example to his younger brothers, and peace and blessings, and same taste to the hopeful lake. Shalom.